I have little sympathy for people who can't have their own children. No one ever promised you a rose garden, and no one ever promised you a perfect family either. Sometimes you need to suck it up, play the cards life dealt you, and live your life the best you can. Uncaring attitude, maybe, but I'll save my sympathy for someone who really needs it. When a society is so fortunate with everything it has, such as the U.S., it's significant that the inability to have a baby is supposed to be deserving of sympathy. Have you seen the living conditions outside the borders of your perfect world? It doesn't have to be overseas. Just visit any slum in your very own city. That is where I'll place my sympathy. If the inability to have your own offspring is your greatest problem in life, you're damn lucky indeed. You just heard how people viewed my story when it went public for the first time. Even the most supportive people in our lives wondered why we hadn't thrown in the towel sooner. Why didn't we just move on? Well, we did several times in my 30s. My very first infertility workup occurred when I was 29. We, my husband and I, found that infertility profoundly affected our lives. There was a point in time when I could not even say the word infertility aloud because I was afraid that would make it more real. We tried everything. We tried diet changes, yoga, acupuncture, IUI, IVF, everything we were comfortable attempting to do. And at the end of 10 years, we were physically, emotionally, and financially depleted. The expectation of success actually made the whole experience that much harder. We had been prepared for the physical challenges of infertility. We were completely unprepared for the emotional and social challenges that resulted. I searched high and low. I, I wanted books. I needed blogs. I needed someone to talk to me. And every book and blog that I found at that time in 2006 was written by a woman who had had her own trials but had ultimately delivered a child. I was happy for them, but they didn't speak to me. They were not my life. Is it any wonder that people don't talk about it? When, when you heard the New York Times comments, you get a sense of how people respond when they hear about people who don't succeed with treatment. It's not pretty. I struggled to accept that Mother Nature and science were not going to work for us. I struggled to accept that I would never experience the ultimate female rite of passage. I would never be pregnant. I would never nurse a child. I would never share in that sisterhood bonding of labor and delivery stories. Our family tree ended with us. There would be no mother of the groom, no mother of the bride, no grandchildren. I had to face and accept all of that. And I also had to accept that there would be no tidy closure. This was going to be in my life forever. Well, while I failed miserably at fertility treatments, I excelled at being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Our fertility journey came to a close just as there was an explosion of mommy blogs, mom's clubs, and the glorification of parenthood at a volume I had never seen in my life. You want to talk about feeling like a misfit. I realized then that it was important to start speaking out. Because when you end fertility treatment, I learned the hard way you're in for a rough landing. There is no language, as Marnie talked about. There's no protocol. There are no casseroles. And you are left to endure the impact, mostly alone, short of a few friends who probably are aware of what you're going through. When you don't fit neatly into people's categories, a friend of mine in Australia, who I met through my blog, told me, you become something of a fringe dweller. People don't know what to do with you. And I can't tell you how many times I've walked into new meetings with colleagues, neighbors, people I've never met before. And inevitably, the conversation turns to children. And I often wonder, do I disclose what we went through? Do I share the loss of our alpha pregnancies? Do I talk about the trauma that we experienced and that we had a hard time working through? Aisha Taylor recently came out on CBS The Talk, 
and she disclosed to her colleagues that she'd been through several rounds of failed treatment. And the response to her story is not unlike what I hear and what many women in my shoes hear, which is, well, you, you're not that old. And, you know, there are other treatments you can try. Giving up on your dream of your child isn't easy. And it's that much harder when you're in the darkness and there's no light to reach toward. When I turned 40, my husband and I decided we'd had enough. And we had just finished uh, doing some work around the house, and I decided I needed to go to the hardware store. And I walked in, and as I was finishing up my purchase, the woman behind the counter, a senior citizen clerk, said, I need to see your driver's license. And I said, well, just so you know, the picture doesn't look anything like me because my hair color's changed a whole bunch of times. And she reached over the counter and said, dear, just you wait. One day, your grandchildren will see pictures of you as a girl and never believe it was you.